Hey everybody, welcome in that uh, new tutorial which will show how you can render your golem simulation using H2A which stands for Houdini to Arnold. So in this tutorial I'll walk you through how you install the plugin for Houdini to be uh, available into H2A and um, how you bring the data from uh, Maya to Houdini um, to have your characters being rendered with shading and whatsoever. So I just created a simple scene where I have a uh, a couple of characters walking here uh, with some variation into the animation and um, if I want to, so there is going to be two ways uh, for me to jump into Houdini the simple way uh, will be to bring all the shaders and the characters as a um, as file which will stand for Gal uh, Arnold um, scene description and um, feed that as file in a procedural manner into Houdini and the other way will be to recreate the exact same node than the cache proxy node that we're having into Maya, which will handle all the parameters and create the rendering. So into the first method, the shading and the look dev will be made into Maya. Into the second method, um, you'll be free to do look, your look dev into Udin. Keep in mind that within the first method, you will be still be able to override shading assignment, but here shaders will come along. So the first step I want to do is to um, have uh, off to uh, obviously I have to M2A loaded here. What I want to do is to export um, all my scene here as an as file. Make sure not to check expand procedurals to keep your scene in a procedural manner. And we're going to write that um, as data here. So let's check what we have into this. So if we check uh, that file, it's a pretty light file. It has all the information about the particles and um, some global data. But what we really need to uh, take a look at is that node here called Golem Proc Arnold. So every time you're having a Golem cache in your scene, it will be translated into that couple of lines here. And you can see they just um, refers to all the parameters which are stored into the cache proxy node. So the name of the crowd field, the name of the cache, where's the cache being stored and what kind of characters we're using into that scene. So we got all the data here. Um, so now I want to bring this into H2A and into Houdini, but obviously that specific node, crowd proc Arnold, is probably not detected by default by Arnold. So we need to um, say to Arnold that when um, Houdini is loaded, um, we want Arnold to be able to recognize that node. So let's take a look um, how we can do this. So what we need to do is to set up an environment variable. So it's a dedicated variable called Arnold plugin pass. If we take a look at the documentation, uh, this is the H2A documentation from the Solid Angle website. So uh, the first environment variable available here uh, is Arnold plugin pass, and it's the pass of the directories with, where H2A looks for shaders and procedurals. So here, what I did is I just installed Golem for Maya. So that's Golem for Maya 2020 here, uh, a to one version. And um, I'm using H2A 6.1. So if I refer to the Solid Angle website, um, H2A 6.1 uh, refers to Arnold Core 7.1. So what we need is to let H2A know that there's going to be a procedural plugin here and there are going to be Golem shaders there. So I'm just um, populating my environment variable on the plugin pass where the, with the pass of the procedural plugins and the pass with the shaders. Um, you also want to make sure that you set up uh, the pass variable or if you're within Linux, it's going to be LD library pass and they're probably going to be listed here. So pass here, this is where uh, you're going to have third party dependencies and LD uh, library pass, which is the equivalent for Linux here. So I set that variable here with the bean directory of that same uh, installation uh, plugin there. And uh, well, that's just a, here I set it up into a bat file, but obviously you can do this into your environment or into your own uh, launcher, uh, doesn't make any difference. And if you set it up properly, when you open Houdini for the first time and you take a look at the list, you'll figure that um, uh, H2A will load plugins from its own location and it will also load plugin from that specific directory that we've been providing. So now we can see that it's loading plugin for uh, Maya 2020 procedurals, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can see that's detected a plugin which uh, declares a new entry called CrowdProc Arnold, which is exactly the same name that the one we're having into the as file I just showed you, that one here. 
It also uh, provides uh, entries from the different shaders because we've been listing shaders there. So switch shader, HSL shader. Um, I haven't done it into my launcher here, but that's probably going to be a good idea. So you may notice that here uh, for the pass, I repeat pass at the end. It's probably going to be a good idea just if you're having other plugins to do the same thing. So repeating on the plugin pass so we don't override, um, you know, existing data values with um, um, with our own. So here all the plugin can coexist. So that's just um, just a safe measure here. But yeah, um, should work. But yeah, probably put that at the back, uh, both on the pass and on the uh, plugin pass. So if you're getting those lists here into the logger, it means that uh, the environment variables that you set uh, works properly and now you're ready to render your crowds within uh, your scene. So um, here I'm just having a scene in which I put a light, a grid, a sphere and, and a camera. And if I want to bring my crowds within it, what can I can do is go into the press tab into my object context, say that I want to bring an Arnold procedural node. And within the procedural parameters, I can load the geometry file. And within the geometry file, I can grab the same pass that I'm having here, load my proc pass, and now I should be good. So um, I can actually um, probably change the bounding box. So you probably notice that the bounding box here is pretty small. So there's a difference of units between um, Maya and Udini. So probably we'll have to uh, scale this up as an 100. Okay, so now we've got the right size. And um, don't forget uh, to switch the frame to a valid frame because remember Golem doesn't have anything at frame one. So make sure that you're within a valid range here. So like frame 10, for example, is gonna be valid. And if we press render, now it will bring, so you will notice that you got a line which refers to Golem. So here the Golem crowd download plugin has been loaded, 8210. Uh, yeah, and just ignore the uh, the the skin that's something I've been changing recently, but now you get your characters walking uh, With the same assets repartition than the one that you're having within the Maya viewport with all the shaders being assigned So keep in mind that the shaders they are coming from that proc as file So everything which has been exported is going to be also the shading and golem will use those to reassign the shading nodes uh, to the characters so that's the uh, pretty uh, uh, straightforward manner here um, just to load your as file and anytime you're going to update your as file um, and you repress render within Udini you have um, that stuff rendering here so let me remove that as file there and re-render to remove those guys down another uh, strategy that you may have let's go back into the scene view and let's go into tab is if you expand the Arnold tab here and you have the Golem plugin loaded, you'll have two new entries coming on, which are bringing by the uh, procedural plugin. So you have something called Arnold crowd character procedurals and Arnold crowd proc Arnold. So that guy here, I actually already created one. Let's bring it in. So I created a crowd proc Arnold node. Let's re enable it. And if we pay attention to that node into the procedural tab here, no more files, but if we go into the various attributes, we should um, come back to the exact same attribute list than the one which has been defined into uh, the file here. So like a crowd field, a cache name, cache file here. So for each of those entries there, I populated with the exact same attributes. Make sure that you also set up into the frame parameter as well. And now if you go into the render view, enable that node and render, um, no need to change the scale because here the change of scale will be taken into account semantically. Uh, the, mat the transformation matrix will not be written. Um, now you get the shape of your characters. So you get the shape of your characters, but also you get a couple of messages saying that, okay, we're looking for various shaders like uh, for the legs, we want to have a shader in, uh, called the uh, man MD body, whatever. Uh, and obviously those are not getting uh, imported from Maya anymore because we didn't import it in as file here. So there's no node for, um, uh, no specific node for this uh, existing. So what we can do is probably, um, there are plenty of different ways to do this. Um, um, you know, you can use uh, all node operators. Um, you can um, uh, do your look dev, export an as file or whatsoever. 
I'll just show you one simple way, but once again, I'm not like a big exper expert of Houdini, but you probably figure your own way if you're not happy with this. Um, I can go into the um, rope uh, context uh, and uh, create an Arnold material node and connect it to my Arnold exit. Into that Arnold material node, I can uh, probably say that what I want to select, I can write uh, an expression here. So let's say all my uh, body meshes, uh, they contain the word body into this. So I can um, just uh, apply a regular expression like star body stars to uh, just apply it to every single um, stuff which has the body. And I want to assign um, a material that I've been creating. So if I press render now, I should get all my body parts of all my characters getting assigned with uh, that shader. And here we go. So now you can see the body parts, so the arms, the face, the legs, the wrists, and the hands gets assigned with that shader. Uh, you may notice that you even have like shading variation. So let's take a look at uh, how that shader looks like. So this is an Arnold shader network that I've been creating into the chop, um, the shading operators uh, context. Uh, so let's jump into this. So, oops. Um, I got my material output, I got my standard surface, and you may notice that my base color, um, rather than being connected directly to a specific color or a specific texture, it's connected to something called the Crowd Switch Arnold shader. So remember when we've been loading, um, you know, the, the Golem plugin, it loaded, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have that log anymore. Uh, it loaded um, the actual procedural plugin, but also some shaders that we provide. So here you can reproduce the same shading graph than the one that we are having into Maya. You can reproduce the same one within Houdini. So I produce like a crowd switch uh, shader, um, provided different input colors here. And um, I just uh, said that um, my selection, so the value of uh, the selector, which is here, is going to be connected to a uh, user data int data and I'm going to read man MD body texture index. So I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, dive into too much into this, but uh, you know, when you define your glam characters, you define chaining attributes, uh, which get assigned to the character. And one attribute here is called man MD body texture index. It's an integer between zero and two. So here we're writing, uh, we're reading this value. It will have a value random between zero and two. So it means that my character is going to randomize between the entry zero, one and two. So between yellow, uh, green and blue. So I can do this for, you know, the t-shirt, the pants, the shoes and so on. And here I can do my look dev and control my look dev within Eugenie and uh, have it uh, being uh, completely red from Arnold. So usually people tend to, you know, automatize this, like creating the switch material based on uh, what's going to be written into the character file. So there's plenty of uh, tools to, you know, check what's into the golem character file, what's the name of the attributes, to what they are connected, what's going to be the bound. So you can make that connection automatically. Same goes with um, that procedural, how you feed uh, that node here, the golem procedural uh, here. So once again, um, we export every time we create a simulation, we export some files, uh, like JSON files, which contain all those attributes. So you can take advantage of those and feed those parameters yourself if you want to, you know, um, have pipeline tools around it. Just a uh, uh, last note, you may notice that my uh, launcher here doesn't take advantage of the Golem for Regini plugin. Here I just installed the Maya plugin. Um, keep in mind that the Golem for Houdini plugin is only if you need to bring real geometry within the Houdini viewport. You may notice that here I don't have any geometry. Um, so the Golem for Houdini plugin only required if you want to bring real geometry uh, and if you want to interact with effects like smoke or uh, maybe dusts. Um, and also that uh, Golem for Houdini plugin is going to be required if you want to use Mantra or if you used to use Karma for rendering because uh, we didn't wrote any specific plugins for Karma or Mantra. But when it comes to Arnold, Renderman or V-Ray and you're using those into your uh, favorite DCC, it could be Houdini here or it could be Kitana or it could be Softimage or whatever, uh, you just need to link with the actual rendering plugin, so not the platform plugin necessarily. You can have the both plugins being loaded at the same time, but keep in mind that this is not required if you just want to use the HTML. So yeah, hope that helps and um, see you into the next video.